What up guys? Today we have the new environmental sensors. Um, I don't have the motion sensor right now for the doors, but we do have one of these guys. Um, these are pretty slick. These are part of the Superlink family that you basically start to push out, finally. Um, they do, it's similar to the older ones with the, um, like the tube. I have, an, uh, I have another video on my channel that I'll link to that's similar. Um, but these ones are completely redone and they work over the uh, Superlink protocol while the other ones do not. So you can have a lot more of these sensors than the older generation. Uh, these are $50 MSRP, so actually really good price for the sensors. And they claim to have a two to three year battery life off of one cell, which is really cool. I think it's a 1332 cell. Well, tiny nickel or um, lithium ion batteries. But uh, let's crack this open and then see what it looks like. All right, so we got the sensor in place. Let's go in and crack this open. It is a pretty small box. What's nice is for how cheap these are, you can have a couple on hand and there you go. So let's crack this open. These go out in stock pretty quick, um, but they are very nice. So let's slide this up. Just like that. And it comes in a little like holder, which is pretty cool. So here is the actual sensor itself. Set that off to the side. Wall mounting kit. Got the screws. This is the plate, magnetic plate, that will slide on the back of this and some documentation. So here's the magnetic plate, and it looks like it also has a, th um, a sticker on the back. Probably a pretty strong sticker. Yeah, it's that uh, 3M stuff, that 40 pound tape. Let's put that right there. And then let's open up this guy. All right, let's slide this out, just like so. And there it is, quite small. Um, we got the power. Looks like uh, probably a sync button. I'll have to look at that. Um, or probably pairing button. Down here is a three and a half millimeter jack. Now this can be used to extend the probe if it wants to, there we go. Um, this can be used to extend the water probe instead of actually using these on the back. So direct contact, we can put them a probe near the water or where it's common to find water or something like that. It does do lux, it does do motion, I believe. Um, sound. I don't know. We'll we'll check we'll check the specs later um, once I get this plugged in and then adopted to the Superlink gateway. And then but yeah, let's go let's go get this connected. Alright guys, I got everything plugged in. I got the Superlink uh, plugged in over here. Um, one thing to know, I did see this. So, you know, you got your standard pull tab um, that will pull it out. However, if you slide it up to replace the battery. It does have a waterproof cover that is very nice. Let me get my finger in there. So it has a weather strip. I don't know if you can see it. It's going to focus, but there is a rubber gasket around there. Uh, for water and it is a CR123A um, industrial lithium ion battery. Let's see what brand it is a Panasonic. So let me push that back in. So now it's live and I can see the little LED and it immediately showed up in the console as you just saw, which is extremely fast. All right, I'm going to leave just the, I'm just going to put the back on there so it doesn't um, fall out for the battery. So I'm going to set this off to the side and then let it adopt. So USL. So that's a different, um, what's the USL ubiquity sensor something sensor link probably is what it is for super link sensor link or unify super link device, something like that. All right, so we've got an update as always. Any new Ubiquiti equipment? Always going to have an update. Guaranteed. 
I don't think I've ever had something that <laughs> didn't need to be updated that was brand new. So, which is always good, it means they're pushing out updates. So, yeah, it's all aluminum. By the way, this plug, hard to get back in if you pull it out. Um, it still needs slight adjusting. <laughs> Yeah, but it's a little plug that's kind of easy for the uh, once it once it pulls once you pull it out, it's not going back in the same. So I'll let that do its thing. I'm wondering how long. So two minutes. Um, Vita status light. Yep. Yeah. So you can probably turn off the light, but let's pull it over the product page right here. So all weatherproof, IPX5 rated. So it has a temperature and humidity sensor function button. We'll see what that does. Uh, water sensors on the back included. The looks like ambient light sensor. So that's two status LEDs, probably one for power and then one for the radio communications. Yeah, signal LED. And then let's go over the technical. Yeah, CR123A, 3.5 millimeter, which is on the bottom you can add an additional scope. So it looks like it runs in the 915.6 to 9927 megahertz band, uh, which is similar, which is the UHF band, which is similar to um, like modal radios and etc. like our cell phones even, and different for the EU, two kilometer range, obviously 1.2 miles LOS, uh, red. Has a red LED. Hmm, cool. 10 to 90 percent for ambient humidity. Um, yeah, simple enough. So this is incomparable to the all-in-one sensor. So this it's kind of like the new version of the all-in-one sensor. So for the super link, you can have these devices, but only up to seven. For the environmental, I let me have a lot more devices connected. Yeah, up to 96 super links. So from seven to 96, which is pretty impressive for one, one device for Bluetooth. And then here we got the uh, Siren PoE. Um, this one is the super link version with uh, the, just the battery connection. So no PoE required. This one is obviously out right now, which is PoE for the sirens. And then the motion sensors is a motion sensor. You got the glass break and the entry, which is still in stock right now, which I haven't picked up. Uh, but this is, you know, your standard entry sensor which this one does do that. Um, but remember that this is the legacy one and you can only have seven of these per uh, Superlink gateway. Uh, one thing to note about this, I do believe that this one does the, I think it's motion. Is this one handle motion? Yeah, this one doesn't handle motion. This is more or less um, just environmental not actual motion. So just water, light, temperature, and humidity. So the entry, so yeah, pretty slick. I'm excited for all these devices to come out and it is updated now. So you can already see no leaks detected. That's great. I wouldn't expect there to be any links with, uh, or leaks for it being on my desk. Uh, pretty high lux level, uh, humidity, Chill 29%. <laughs> it's great here in Idaho. Um, and the temperature. Is it really 76 degrees over here? Um, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, 76.2. That makes sense why I'm kind of warm right now. Okay, so here's the statistics. Uh, you know, it's it's filling out the statistical. I believe it has a two year shelf life or excuse me, two to three years of battery retainment. So I do recommend if you don't need certain things, turn it off. It's going to last a lot longer if you do. 
Um, for example, like if you need, don't care about Lux or anything like if this is going to crawl space or something like that for leaks, just turn it off. Um, same with any of the other ones. If you don't need them, turn them off. Um, like for example, the built-in, if you're going to use a sensor, if you're going to use the probe or the 3.5 jack, then turn off the built-in. You don't need it. it. Saves on battery. And then you can lock it to the link. So if you have multiple super link gateways, you can lock it to, you know, certain ones so they don't transverse and then, you know, get it disconnected when you really don't want it to be disconnected. Uh, I'll leave with that saying. But yeah, no, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, so the lights are actually off on it right now. Um, there is no, no lights whatsoever. Uh, if you push the button, it does turn on. So you can see the radio connection light and then for the power, let's see if I can do this without the lights. Yeah, see it does the power, and then you push it one more time. If I can find the button, it will turn off or it'll just go, it'll turn off automatically. So pretty slick, 50 bucks, not bad for a sensor that can do all of that. Um, let's see. Yeah. There you go. The light level is way down when I'm, when I have it covered and it updates every five minutes, I believe. Since I'm, and you can do alarms based on certain, you know, things like, for example, if it detects water, then it'll alarm. You know what? Let's do that right now. I'm going to pour. I don't have a cup over here, so I'm just going to pour just a little bit of water on my desk. I know, I know what I do for you guys. All right, poured a little bit of water. So leave the back. So actually, I'm going to put the other cover back on. So I believe the sensors on the back, the little probes can do water. So I'm just going to place it in the water. And there you go. That was immediate too. It probably prioritizes, um, leaking as you know an emergency so it immediately sends the signal and i also do see that it's flashing red let me see if i can do this quick enough because it'll probably still be wet so yeah so you can see that it's flashing red or it was but small well, stop detecting water so what's interesting so the water can be fully on the back However, it's, what it's doing is it's sending a current over to these two probes. So if the current, you know, completes, then it triggers. And we could probably do that with cable. So let me grab a cable and I want to test this to see if that is in case the theory. Okay, so I grabbed just some alligator clips. So I'm going to put it on the back, just like so for the contact. And then I'm going to touch the other side. Let's see. My theory, if I can get it seated just right, doing one of the probes. It's not easy with this. There we go. Should be on contact. Yep, there we go. So it uses the connectivity of conductivity of the water to detect if it's leaking or not, which makes sense. Um, it's a pretty standard way of doing it. But yeah, and then immediately if it's gone, it stops. It's probably a, probably because this only refreshes every five minutes, so it probably triggers. Yeah, update frequency every five minutes. You know, it looks like you can change that to 30 seconds, one minute, 15, 30 minutes. That doesn't matter. But if it set the text something, it's immediately going to transmit and be like, something's wrong and go fix it, <laughs> you know, so. But yeah, no, these are super slick devices. They're very reasonable for what they are and how far they can transmit. Um, yeah, this is this is great. If you guys have any questions, go in and write down in the comments, subscribe. And then uh, if you need any consulting, you can reach out to us at mbnisp.net. All right, guys, have a good one. Later.